Yo, what is good, YouTube? Welcome back. It's your boy Skylar, and today we got most incredible military moments caught on camera. All right, I hope you guys enjoy. As always, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, let's get it. From a nimble Bro. Norwegian anti ship missile that can hit a target over 100 miles away, and a Damn. paratrooper in Alaska whose training jump almost ended in catastrophe, to a Russian ICBM that NATO has rightfully named Satan 2, and a special mine clearing device that looks. Bro, Colin, naming a missile Satan 2? It's in. Bro. That's on demon timing. What? Alaska, whose <laughs> training jump almost ended in catastrophe to a Russian ICBM that NATO has rightfully named Satan 2 and a special mine clearing device that looks more like a giant exploding fire hose. Here are some of the most incredible military moments. All right. I've never seen camera. that before. For a long time, the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard have struggled to manage China's vast array of lightly armed vessels and dual-use civilian craft. These boats are mm. extremely agile, making them hard to spot, stop, and sink. To solve this problem, Damn. the DoD sank millions of dollars into the QuickSync program. A QuickSync is a low-cost answer to a major problem. Basically, QuickSync straps a guidance kit to a 2,000-pound JDAM, or Joint Direct Attack Munition. Because JDAMs pounds? are readily available and can be dropped by most military aircraft, it effectively turns any pilot into a ship-sinking machine. Now, QuickSync bombs have three critical components. The guidance kit that steers the rocket, the seeker kit that tracks it, like, the GPS? target, and the payload that deals all the damage. To demonstrate QuickSync's abilities, the Navy arranged a live demonstration in the Gulf of Mexico on a decommissioned ship. The best part? They set a GoPro on board to capture the chaos. Oh, really? Oh. From the sky, you can see the rocket fly in and split the ship in two. A huge... Bro, immediately. What? Bro, that bomb is nuts. Bro, the size of that ship is no joke. And <laughs> what? From the sky, you can see the rocket fly in and split like the ship Kit Kat in two. Bar, like. <laughs> a huge wall of water blocks the view, and by the time it dissipates, the ship is nowhere to be seen. It's that fast. The GoPro puts things into even better perspective. Wow. The missile is so fast that you don't even see it hit. Only water spraying out of a hole in the center of the ship. Not That's long after, the GoPro... It's not even like a like an explosion, like fire. It just like literally split in half and the sink immediately. Just like water and what? Only water spraying out of a hole in the center of the ship. Not long after, the GoPro falls down and into the water. A 3D rendering shows how the ship looked at the bottom of the sea after it sank. Normally, the Navy would deal with maritime ships with torpedoes launched from submarines. It looked like but the Titanic. Those systems are far more expensive than QuickSync. Furthermore, QuickSync puts anti ship lethality in the Air Force's hands. Now, we Damn. can attack hostile ships on two fronts from underwater and from high in the clouds. That's nuts. The K-300P, or the Bastion-P, is a Russian coastal defense missile designed to engage surface ships such as battleships, convoys, and aircraft carriers. The letter P in the name denotes the rocket's mobility. That's because it's stored in the back of a truck and driven to where it's supposed to launch. On September 26th of 2018, Crazy. the Russian military arrived in the Arctic to test some of their Bastion-P rockets. When they launch, these rockets shoot straight up and then use thrusters on either side to correct their trajectory. Here's what oh. that looks like up close and personal. Technology is insane. That missile literally transformed like two seconds after launch into the air and took off. What? <laughs> Look, it transformed. Nah. What? The Bastion P's maximum range varies between 75 and 186 miles. The missile can reach an altitude Damn. of 46,000 feet before falling back down and skimming across the ocean. It'll fly about 16 feet above the water before exploding against its target. Now, while the Bastion P can do some damage, 
it's nothing compared to the weapons Russia keeps underground. The, nuke, the nukes? It gotta be the nukes. Meet the Sarmat, an intercontinental what? ballistic missile or an ICBM. The size of that, bro, nah, that's a, nah, nah, <laughs> there's no way, no, that's one of Elon Mars, uh, Elon Musk, like, that's one of, this, yeah, there's yeah, no way. Equipped with a thermonuclear warhead, this bad boy packs a 50 that's a space megaton shuttle. That's punch, like, yeah. which is like 50 million tons of TNT blowing up at once. There's a reason NATO calls it Satan 2. The ordnance weighs over 200 tons, is over 100 feet long, and is roughly 10 feet wide. It takes a lot of power just to load it into the launch tube. When Satan 2 launches, an initial burst pops it out of the tube. Then the bottom cap flies off and secondary thrusters kick in. This propels the rocket into the stratosphere, wow. never to be seen again. Well, Bro, I don't even want to know the damage this missile has a capability of doing i don't even want to know because the size the weight it doesn't make sense a small like you know a, a rocket you know the size of me can do like good damage this one is literally a skyscraper <laughs> like you feel me a hundred feet long bro what at least not until it comes down on the other side of the world let's see it all again in slow motion no, that's a building. That's pretty cool in slow motion. The Sarmat can travel just over 11,000 miles, meaning it can travel from Moscow to New York City with room to spare. According to President Putin, it can carry up to 10 nuclear warheads. Let's hope Satan 2 stays underground where it belongs. Like, why do you need that, bro? That alone, the world is over with. I'm telling you, the world is over with. Like, the impact, the the aftermath, the effects, the... the oh, my God, the radiation, the... Oh. Like, why would you need such a, Anti -mine a missile? Anti-mine is a crucial branch of any military force. Nobody is better at it than the U.S. Army's amphibious assault divisions. That's thanks to the Mark 154 Mine Clearance Launcher, the latest in minesweeping technology. Picture this. You're piloting an amphibious assault vehicle, or AAV, and approaching an enemy beachhead. You know the sand is filled with mines, but you obviously can't see them. Thankfully, your AAV is equipped with a Mark 154. Mm. You kick back and relax while a giant exploding fire hose does all the work. Fire hose? So if it land on something, it, it's what like what happens? Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> I was completely wrong. Okay, I see. That makes sense now. Holy. Mine clearing line charges like this have been around since World War II. We've oh, obviously really? made significant improvements over the years. Mm. In a nutshell, the fire hose looking device is a 100 meter string of C4. It deploys over a minefield and detonates on command, clearing a path wide enough to move tanks and troops through safely. Here's what that might look like from the driver's seat. Boy, that's so loud too. Oh, that's a good distance. Okay. And I see why. The Mark 154 isn't only for beaches. As you can see, it's helpful whenever your army rolls up on an enemy minefield. Take this clip from the forests of Fort Stewart, Georgia, for example.
bro, I'm just here watching a vehicle transform. Like, <laughs> what year are we in? 2060 or something? Oh my god. <laughs> Bro, rip all the animals, bro. God damn. Of course, countermeasures exist to combat these line clearing charges. Some mines use fuse mechanisms that detonate under steady pressure, such as a vehicle driving over them. However, the fuse locks when exposed to sudden shock, such as a massive cord of C4 detonating nearby. Mm. To anything Belarus nearby, is yeah. a landlocked Eastern European country sandwiched between Russia, Ukraine, Poland, Lithuania, and Latvia. For them, Independence Day is July 3rd, celebrating their liberation from Nazi occupation. The capital city of Minsk, home to just under 2 million people, hosts the annual military parade. It's For all the people that live over in the UK, right? How does it feel? Like when you live in a country and you're completely surrounded by other countries, do you feel like threatened? Like you see like how Russia and Ukraine had it out, like I won't say out of nowhere, but like how um Russia invaded Ukraine. Do you ever feel a sense of fear like that? Cause you know, I wonder because watching this and hearing all the country that surrounded this country is like oh uh, man. It's the occupation. The capital he started off with Russia, and I'm like, oh, boy. The <laughs> city of Minsk, home to just under 2 million people, hosts the annual military parade. It's a big deal that requires a lot of practice. So the tanks performing in the parade will run dress rehearsals in the weeks leading up. On June 26th of 2017, one of those rehearsals went awry when it began raining on the parade route. Someone should have told this driver to slow down a bit. What happened? Damn, he's like... Since when tanks be going that fast? Bro, you have no tires. You have no traction, bro. <laughs> it didn't straight metal on pavement. Wet pavement at that. Oh. That could have ended so bad. The guy that's on the gun, he literally got hit in the face with a power line. Look, not in the face, but the back of the head. Bro, he could have got zapped to death. Oh my god, bro. That was too close. Here comes the next one. Bro, slow down. That mean he may help his boy out. <laughs> he just left him. Thankfully, everyone in and on the tank was okay. They're lucky this didn't happen on parade day, as the sidewalks would have been teeming with people. Aftermath mm. footage shows the kind of damage a speeding tank can do when it loses control. Damn, that's a lot of money though. Someone's gonna make trouble. And the parade is in a couple days? Not everyone is excited about the Independence Day parade in Minsk. Some question whether it's safe for 40-ton tanks to speed down the main road like that. They point to this video as Exhibit A. They also think the whole thing is a gross waste of money. While there are no exact figures, it's estimated that each parade causes $3 million worth of damage to the roads. Damn. After all, yeah. they weren't built for tanks to roll down. Then again, the U.S. spends over $2 billion on fireworks every 4th of July. Hey, 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 hey. You can't compare the U.S. to a small country of 2 million. Bro, we have almost, what, 350 million um, U.S. citizens? Like, come on, bro. <laughs> There's no comparison. In mid-August of 2021, Hurricane Grace slammed into eastern Mexico. It traveled across the country, weakening significantly before reaching the west coast. Eastern states suffered much worse than western states. The south-central state of Hidalgo got caught in the middle. After the storm, the Mexican military deployed hundreds of emergency helicopters to survey the damage and help the affected citizens. Okay. On August 26th, one of those survey missions went horribly wrong when a naval helicopter fell from the sky and crashed into a bus. 
Damn. I hope everyone is okay. It wasn't that bad. It looked like everyone survived. But that was a close one. Look at how the blades shatter like glass when they hit the ground. There's no telling how far they flew or how much damage they caused. I wonder what Thankfully, happened. Thankfully, the bus cleared the danger zone seconds before the blades started ripping apart everything in sight. And we're not sure what caused the helicopter to crash. According to some reports, the chopper experienced some kind of equipment malfunction. Thanks oh. to the pilot's quick thinking, everyone inside was okay. They were treated for minor cuts and bruises on the scene. The history of paratrooping goes back to the mid-1940s, when a platoon within the 29th Infantry Regiment became the first official paratrooper unit. Airborne divisions have been 1940s. dropping into enemy territory ever since. Of course, paratroopers go through relentless training before ever experiencing the real thing. On March 8th of 2023, an airborne division in Alaska flew up for a routine test jump. A soldier named Josh stepped up to the door and jumped with his fellow paratroopers. Unfortunately, his jump didn't go very well. Oh shit, you see that guy right there? What happened? Oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> everyone is like, I just love how everyone like cheering, but everyone is like so calm. No one's like, oh my god, start panicking. They're like, come on, buddy, you got this. Come on, buddy. Josh pulled his reserve chute at the last second after his main one failed. He landed safely on the ground, but probably needed a few minutes to relax. Now, parachute. As I'm saying, bro, if I ever, ever go skydiving, I need two parachutes. I need my main one and I need a backup. As soon as I pull the main one or the person jumping with me pull the main one, ain't work, immediately pull the second one. I don't want to wait till the last second. <laughs> it can fail for three reasons. Careless or improper packing, poor body position during deployment, or faulty equipment. If the main parachute fails, jumpers are taught to cut it away immediately to deploy their reserve chute safely. In this video, Josh seems to have cut the main chute just enough to deploy his reserve before hitting the ground. The Naval Strike Missile, or NSM, is precisely what it sounds like. It's an anti-ship land attack missile capable of taking out enemy vessels from 100 nautical miles away. Kongsberg Damn. Defense and Aerospace, a Norwegian company that specializes in anti-ship missiles, builds and sells them to the US, Japan, Canada, Australia, and Spain, among other countries. Battleship? On June 24th of 2015, <laughs> Kongsberg demonstrated how effective their NSM was. They locked onto a distant frigate, armed the warhead, and fired. Let's see how accurate this thing is. Gone. Well, let's see that again in slow motion. The missile the comes in from the right side of the screen. Once it makes impact, parts of the ship get scattered into the ocean. From a distance, the size of the blast becomes even more apparent. The NSM Damn. uses inertial GPS and terrain reference navigation to lock onto and destroy its targets. The frame and high thrust to weight ratio also makes the missile more maneuverable than others. And because it can travel so low to the water, it excels at avoiding enemy air defenses. The NSM can also maneuver around physical obstacles to strike targets on land. In other words, this thing's like Yondu's arrow, but if the arrow carried a 260-pound warhead. That's crazy. If you've ever seen pounds. a World War II paratrooper movie, then you've seen static line jumping. The U.S. military has used this technique since the 1940s to deploy paratroopers safely, effectively, and rapidly over Another the battlefield. Oh the static God, line bro. is a cord connecting the jumper to the aircraft. In the footage, you'll see yellow lines coming off their deployment packs that connect to a rail above the door. 
As the paratrooper jumps, the line pulls taut and deploys the parachute. All the jumper must do is navigate to the ground and rely on their training to land safely. What happened? Damn, look at that. So it's cool. <laughs> Imagine you're just an animator seeing this, like God damn. We're pretty well, sir. We're pretty well. Love it. Very nice. Did you land nicely? You can say that. I'm all okay, ma'am. All okay. Good job. Good Before job. Before these guys jump from a real plane, they'll undergo between four and five hours of ground level training. The key is body position. If you don't leave the aircraft properly, you could end up like this Mexican paratrooper. Let's just say he had the spins. Like, what do you do in that situation? Are they able to, like, pull him back in? Bro, I'll be throwing up. Nah, I have motion sickness, bro. Oh, nah. This is, like, the worst. I keep just going. We're not sure how long this <laughs> poor paratrooper kept spinning outside the plane. Imagine being stuck on an endless carnival ride several thousand feet above sea level. It's enough to make a battle-hardened paratrooper sick to their stomach. According yeah, to reports, they were able to pull him back inside. We're just not sure how. Hopefully, they had water and crackers to calm his stomach. Yeah, I'm need a hospital. Get of all, all the that. secret <laughs> weapons the government works on, the railgun has become one of the most infamous. I've they seen were technically this. first invented over a hundred years ago. And since then, they've come quite a long way. The rail guns we have today are basically massive cannons. They use electromagnetic pulses rather than yeah. gunpowder or chemicals to launch a projectile. And uh, launch is an understatement. These guns can fire a non-explosive projectile over 100 nautical miles at speeds reaching Mach 6. That's over 4,600 wow. miles per hour. Here's what that looks and sounds like in action. Jeez. I was going through everything. Now, rail guns don't fire an explosive round because they simply don't have to. Instead, they fire a solid projectile that relies on pure kinetic energy to obliterate whatever stands in its way. A railgun is a big electric mm -hmm. circuit containing three crucial parts, a power source, two parallel rails, and a conductive projectile. First, they'll run millions of amps through the rails. The current travels up and down the positive and negative arms, creating a powerful electromagnetic field that launches the projectile at mind-boggling speeds. As of today, railguns are in the R&D stage. We know how to make them and why they work, but we don't know how practical they are. The biggest challenge right now is durability. Nobody has demonstrated the ability to fire multiple high-power shots without... Fr I don't think it's mobile, too. It Fine, looks like it's very stationary. Thing. Remember, a million amps is a lot of power. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, be sure to click the link... On be sure to just hit the subscribe button, like, comment, what do you want me to react to next? And I got you. I hope you guys enjoy this video. 
and have a blessed day. See you for the next one.